I know he didn't want to do it. Do you think attracted him to the role of Quint? Because obviously, I think famously, there were other people in the frame uh, as well. There was uh, Lee Marvin was talked about, Sterling Hayden, obviously... General Jack D. Ripper from Doctor Strange Love. Um, your father had worked with um, the producer Zanuck and Brown on the Sting. Was that part of the reason you think he took the role, or was it what was on the page? I, I know he didn't want to do it, <laughs> you know, as it was originally written. He wanted to do Brief Encounter, which is that, and that shows you how he wanted to, um, you know, alter the trajectory of his casting. You know, having played a heavy in The Sting, mm. um, I think he wanted to do something completely different. Um, but thankfully, um, Mary, his wife, and, and Virginia Shaw, his assistant at the time, persuaded him that Martha's Vineyard would be a nice place to go to. <laughs> um, you know, and obviously they were paying well, um, although he didn't make money out of the film um, because of the tax situation and the, the fact that it ran over. Um, but obviously it, it then allowed him to become like a million dollar star after that. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, he was always wrestling, which is one of the aspects of the film, of the play, um, with trying to make money to look after his family and, and live to a certain uh, standard and, um, and artistic um, desires, you know? Yeah. Um, I think, um, I think, I think it's in the, the, the play. Um, I, I hope I'm right, but do you think he had a certain, um, dismissiveness. I think there's a line in the play where he he's a little dismissive of of the idea of them being in this movie. Uh, Jaws is a film, a film about a, a killer shark. Did he think it was all just a bit silly? Yes, I think he did. You know, um, certainly with early drafts of the script, um, uh, you know, I he felt that it was just a you know and you and this is the thing though you never know what you what you you know on paper to him it looked like it was going to be a b movie mm. you know that would make money um you know and he'd rather be working with harold pinter you know but uh, i think afterward you know i think he he did see as it was going on he did see a lot in steven spielberg and they went bankrupt and he offered to, you know, defer his wages in order for Stephen to finish the film, because I think he thought that Stephen had a lot of talent. Mm. And, and when it was released, I think he was proud of it. Um, he realised, because I mean, this is the other thing you don't know, you know, John Williams's score, Werner Fields' wonderful editing, you know, all these, all these things, you know, all you do at the end of the day is see these very sort of, you know, bumpy, you know, rough, you know, sequences um, called dailies at the, at the end of, you know, the day. And, you know, a lot of actors, a lot of actors would say that they genuinely don't know how good or bad a film is going to be. It's, it's, you know, it's no sure thing. And I, th I think that Robert did, felt that it was going to be poor, but was delighted uh, to, re to realise at the end the, what the result was, you know. Hello, Alex here. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get in touch with us at all for any reason, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at JTFpod. And don't forget to subscribe to the full audio podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your pods.